Hey Crafty Cuties, welcome back to Paper Terrace. If you're new, I'm Jessica. Today we're gonna do a little shopping together. This was such a quick video though that I wanted to have something for you guys to look forward to at the end. So stick around, I'll show you the items that I purchased and we're gonna do a really quick little make together um, with the Tim Holtz worn wallpaper, which I know a lot of you have. So let's get into the shopping and then I'll see you back here for our crafting. Hey Crafty Cuties. <laughs> We're at Hobby Lobby and I happened to find some cute Christmas paper pads, so I thought I would show them to you real fast here. Okay, so we have about five here. This is a Mistletoe Lodge. I thought that was pretty expensive, $21.99, but they're 50% off and you do get 60 sheets, so it is a bigger paper pad. <laughs> We were with my mom, so anyways, there is a Christmas plaid. I like this one because plaids are so easy to use, so really it's just a variety of different plaids here. You can really use these all the time, but at the same time, they are pretty Christmassy as far as the colors go. I think I'm gonna get this one because it would be good to have for my Patreon member projects. Yep, okay. We have Ornamental Christmas, you can see here. Okay, let's see here. These papers feel a little bit thinner, so. Pretty basic Christmas pattern. Okay. Let's see, this one's called Pine Street Square. What, buddy? Ooh, I like how kind of vintagey and worn these ones look. Yeah, you can say hi. Hi. <laughs> Alistair wants to say hello. Yeah, these are all very like worn, kind of vintagey looking papers. And there's two more. Old Pole Productions. I think these ones are kind of brighter colors. Oh. And then the last one that I saw, Old World Winter. I haven't looked through this one yet, but it also looks kind of worn and kind of vintagey, I guess you would say. Oh, I like that blue, even though it's not even like a Christmassy kind of look. I really like that. Whoops. Let's try that again. Yep, you can get that one. It's some really cute, like different end papers or like edge papers. Yeah, you like that. Also, some plaids. Oh gosh, I kind of like this one. Like this. Let's see. It looks like you get about three of each image too but anyways i just oh this one right here i like that a lot okay, there's one. hello oh, okay. She wants so there we go. okay like i said this is a quick video but i'm trying to see if they have any of the tim holtz fabrics here a lot of people have told me this is where i'm at hobby lobby this is where they find tim holtz fabrics but i am looking at the christmas fabrics real quick Okay, I was thinking that maybe these styles were close to Tim Holtz, but nope, not at all. <laughs> okay, well, hmm. this is cute. Okay, we're gonna stop the video here, but look how pretty this fabric is. Wow, that is so pretty. Well, guys, thanks for shopping along, and we'll see you in the next video. All right, like I said, that was quick, but I wanted to show you the fun uh, Christmas papers at Hobby Lobby, and I don't think I showed this in the video. So I picked up this metallic uh, watercolor set. I've been wanting to buy one of the more expensive 
metallic watercolor sets for a while, but I don't watercolor enough that I just can't justify it. So I saw this one, I was able to open it up in store and it looked so pretty. Now, I will say I went ahead and used it and I'm not quite sure if it's just the paper I use or if it's not that impressive. It was $14.99 and I think it was 40% off. But I'll show you the swatches. Now I didn't use watercolor paper and that could be why. But for me, I don't really like to always use watercolor paper anyway, so I wouldn't typically be using it. There is a really nice sheen on the colors, and obviously I used a purple paper, but to me that didn't matter. I kind of wanted to see how the color is performed on a colored paper. So the sheen is really nice, and so I may be able to use like the golds to accent some of my projects, but the colors just weren't, I guess they just didn't seem that impressive to me. Um, but it, it is uh, an inexpensive set, and so I'm definitely going to try it out on some other papers and see how I like it. Um, and then I did grab this paper set here, which was the Christmas plaids. I'm really excited to use this for some project I, projects I have in mind. And I thought it would be fun also to do a Christmas journal that has like all plaid papers in it because that would be really easy to work with. Um, I know I just did a quick flip there because I showed it in the shopping video, I believe. But also what I didn't show in the video was this pack, which I was really excited for. This is the worn wallpaper scraps. I've bought the worn wallpaper uh, packs a lot, but I normally have only seen the ones that have the actual wallpaper pieces that you see here, but this one actually came with some cutouts of some florals. And so I wanted to uh, just give you a quick idea for how you can use these wallpaper pieces because, um, yeah, like I said, I've bought a lot of these packs and I'm always like not sure how to use them. They're so pretty, but it's like, how do I use them up? But let me just finish showing you the prints really quick and then I can show you my really quick idea. It's just an expandable um, little envelope that has two different pockets. So there we go. And then, yeah, this is so cute. And then it has these uh, florals, quite a few too, actually. And then some borders. So this was a really good find. I didn't even know that they had the packs with the floral cutouts. So I was excited to find that. Okay, so let me show you the project real quick. And we can make one together. It's like, I would say this is probably like a five minute project, maybe less. So here you go, I have a little Velcro dot and then it just opens up like this and expands. So that would be great for pen pal mail. I'll probably end up making something like this for my Patreon members actually. So I'm gonna go ahead and just grab any of the prints here. I have two envelopes. These are smaller envelopes. I'm gonna um, actually close them like this. And then what I'm going to do is take my piece here and I'm going to take my two envelopes, just put them together. I'm gonna to use this to kind of measure. I want this to go up as close to I can as covering it. Now the size I have here doesn't allow me to go all the way up, but that's fine because we'll trim that. And then I'm gonna take this piece and fold it down. So again, no measurements here. We're just going to kind of eyeball it. But you can see here that when this folds down, it just barely overlaps. So that's gonna be totally fine. And then what we're going to do is again, use this to measure. And we're gonna put this all the way over and we can go ahead and trim off the excess like so. And I'll just keep it in here so I can get as close to a perfect cut as I need. I don't have to use my trimmer, that's nice. And then what I'm going to do is actually go ahead and use my glue. Since we trimmed that off on the side, these are now open. And so I'm gonna actually just kinda, I could have did this before, but uh, I'm going to just get a little bead of glue all the way down just to close up those sides. And I'll do the same to this side here. Okay, now if you want, you can ink around the edges. Um, I'm gonna use my Distress Oxide in Pine Needles. This is like my favorite color right now. This isn't really exactly going to show. Oops, I've missed a step, but that's okay. So actually, we're going to also trim off the very top because we closed it um, 
with the flap and so now we're gonna actually trim off like just this small sliver just to make the tops open so I'll go ahead and re-ink that but again that's not really going to show but now what we're gonna do this part is important you're gonna glue only like the middle of the two envelopes together make sure that your opening is at the top so literally just put some glue kind of in the center and then we're going to do the same placement of glue for the front and the back and that what is what helps us be able to um, pull the envelopes out to expand if that makes sense and then you'll just place it right inside there like that i added a little too much glue up here but that's okay and then to finish it off, all I did was went through and I chose one of my flowers. And I'm just going to actually, I'm going to add some ink because the bottom of this one is, there's like a white strip. So, And so I'm going to take this, add a little glue at the top so that I can just glue it right down in the middle for a really pretty little topper. And then if you do want, you can add a Velcro dot so that it will stick down. And I have these teeny tiny Velcro dots. They're like the thinnest thing ever. Love them. Got them on Amazon for like a dollar or two dollars, something like that. But um, they're actually non-dimensional. So then I'm just going to go like that. And then once that dries, I can easily pull it up like so. Give you a closer look. And then you can pull these apart like that. And you have your expandable envelope. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing that quick little uh, crafty make. And, and my camera died. So I will see you guys later. Bye.